The Honorable Member for Ottawa, West Nepean. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I would like to thank my Honourable colleague, the Member from Etobicoke Centre, for introducing this important motion to establish an Ambassador for Women, Peace and Security. This is a very special topic for me, as I have first-hand experience in this area. As a Canadian woman who has served as a civilian peacekeeper in Bosnia and Kosovo, and alongside the peacekeeping mission in the Democratic Republic of Congo, and as a recipient of the Governor-General's Peacekeeping Service Medal, I know firsthand the positive outcomes of having more women engaged in global peacekeeping. I am a woman. I was a peacekeeper. I was not deployed. Like so many other civilian peacekeepers, I volunteered to go. I did it because I could not stand by and watch what was happening to women and children in those countries. In Bosnia and Kosovo, sexual violence against women was used as a weapon of war. I am very proud of all the Canadian women who have served as peacekeepers, military and civilian, in some of the most dangerous and difficult corners of the world. I am equally proud of another Canadian woman, Justice Louise Arbour, who was instrumental in making sure that rape can be considered a war crime. In the Congo, 48 women are raped every hour. 48 women per hour. I worked directly with those women. I saw their strength and their resilience, their determination to make a better world for their daughters and sons. It is for that reason that I am so proud to be part of a government that has done so much on a feminist foreign policy and on the National Action Plan on Women, Peace and Security. Gone are the days when warlords can get together behind closed doors, divide up the spoils of war and call it a peace agreement. We know that peace agreements are more durable, in fact two-thirds less likely to fail when women are at the table and involved in the implementation of those agreements. Dans les conflits armés d'aujourd'hui, les civils sont les premières cibles. Le viol est utilisé comme tactique de guerre et l'extrémisme violent a ajouté un discours idéologique qui attire les gens de loin. Les femmes et les filles sont fréquemment prises pour cibler et soumises à des violations des droits de la personne et du droit humanitaire, y compris des violences sexuelles et sexistes. Des en enfants, garçons et filles sont enrôlés de force dans des groupes armés et le nombre de réfugiés et de personnes déplacées par les conflits armés augmente de jour en jour. While everyone is affected, women and men, girls and boys, generally experience conflict differently. They bring different perspectives to conflict resolution and peace building. Women broaden the agenda beyond that of the warring parties, and the link between their meaningful participation and durable peace agreements has been established. Yet women are often excluded from those peace processes. In recognition of the different impact on conflict, of conflict on women and girls and the unique abilities that they bring to prevent, end and recover from conflict, the United Nations Security Council has since 2000 passed eight resolutions, starting with resolution, Security Council Resolution 1325, forming the basis of the Women, Peace and Security Agenda. Mr. Speaker, you will recall that I spoke about Security Council Resolution 1325 in my maiden speech. It was that important to me. And I am very proud of how far our government has come to making it a reality. Today's motion will go even further. When I worked in Norway, the project was implemented under their gender ambassador. I saw there that giving women a strong voice at the highest possible level, an ambassador, has tangible results. Taking a feminist approach to peace and security is a smart, practical solution to address hard security needs. We must deal with the serious problems of sexual violence and conflict, as well as sexual exploitation and abuse by peacekeepers and other international personnel. We must ensure that the particular needs of women and girls are met during conflict and humanitarian crises, including access to sexual and reproductive health services. Addressing these problems has direct benefits for women, including those who are courageous defenders of peace or survivors of sexual violence, but it also clearly contributes to the stability and security of all. Mr. Speaker, the full breadth of the Canadian government is united in the belief that gender equality serves as a foundation for more peaceful and secure nations and communities. 
Canada's second National Action Plan for the implementation of UN Security Council resolutions on women, peace and security was launched last year. The plan includes an increased number of federal partners, which has enabled our government to broaden its reach under the Action Plan to areas such as the protection of refugee women and countering violent extremism here in Canada. New commitments have increased available funding. We have launched multiple new initiatives, increasingly worked with civil society, and called upon Canadian officials at home and abroad to mobilize support for women as active agents of peace. Canada's ambitions for change are bold, but are coupled with understanding that lasting peace and lasting change takes time. For example, at the November 2017 Vancouver UN Peacekeeping Defence Ministerial, Canada launched the ELSI Initiative for Women in Peace Operations, a bold and innovative pilot project to increase the meaningful participation of women peacekeepers globally and make their work environment safer, more inclusive, and ultimately enhance the effectiveness of UN peace operations. We believe that gender equality in UN peace operations is an important goal in itself, and that the inclusion of more military, civilian, and police women peacekeepers can also have important benefits for operational effectiveness. Au cours de la présidence canadienne de G7 en 2018, le gouvernement a cherché à promouvoir l'égalité entre les sexes dans le cadre de ses nombreux axes d'intervention. Il a mobilisé les membres du G7 afin d'appuyer une annonce du sommet de G7 dans laquelle ils se sont engagés à verser près de 3,8 milliards de dollars pour accroître les possibilités d'éducation pour les femmes et les filles en situation de crise et de conflit. L'initiative de partenariat du G7 pour les femmes, la paix et la sécurité, lancée conjointement par les membres du G7 et huit pays partenaires, fait progresser l'égalité entre les sexes et les droits des femmes dans les États fragiles et touchés par le conflit. Le Canada a également lancé de concerts avec le Royaume-Uni et le Bangladesh, le réseau des chefs de la défense sur les femmes, la paix et la sécurité, afin de susciter un changement culturel et institutionnel transformateur dans les forces armées nationales. Through the Women's Voice and Leadership Initiative, Canada is supporting local grassroots women's rights organizations. The new Gender Equality Partnership with philanthropists and the private sector will bring new investments in support of women's rights. Our government is committed to meeting its targets and investing where necessary to deliver on the out objectives outlined in the Renewed Action Plan. Canada has a long history of advocating for and supporting gender equality, of promoting the empowerment of women and girls, of calling for the protection of their human rights, and fighting sexual and gender-based violence, including in conflict settings. Canada was instrumental in the adoption of the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action in 1995 and in bringing the issue of sexual violence against women to the UN's attention. In 2000, Canada formed the Group of Friends on Women, Peace and Security in New York, an informal group of over 50 UN member states. This group, currently chaired by Canada, shares information and best practices and conducts periodic joint advocacy in the UN context. Canada founded a similar group in Geneva earlier this year. Canada will continue to play a leading advocacy role at the UN on advancing the Women, Peace and Security agenda and engage with key UN agencies and a wide range of member states. Monsieur le Président, des engagements ont été pris, des fonds ont été débloqués et de nouveaux programmes sont en cours. Toutefois, l'obtention de résultats durables qui répondent aux ambitions du gouvernement exigera une réflexion régulière et honnête sur les domaines où il doit s'améliorer. Le gouvernement du Canada demeure entièrement déterminé à collaborer avec tous les intervenants du programme sur les femmes, la paix et la sécurité pour assurer que les progrès vers l'attente de nos objectifs communs se poursuivent de façon constante, réfléchie et sans relâche. Les femmes, les filles et tous ceux qui souffrent d'une absence de paix et de sécurité ne méritent rien de moins. The Government of Canada remains engaged on this important issue. We are proud of our accomplishments, but are aware that there is more that can be done to advance this issue, both globally and nationally. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.